This is the Jordan River, where it flows into the Sea of Galilee at the north edge of the lake. It's like a delta. It's really marshy and reedy, and uh, it's very wide and very clean water coming down from the Golan Heights. The north edge of the Sea of Galilee uh, has the exit of the Jordan River into the lake. The south end of the Sea of Galilee has the exit of the Jordan River down into the Jordan River Valley, and it flows down into the Dead Sea, making the Sea of Galilee a wide spot in the Jordan River. 13 miles long, six miles wide, Jordan River water all the way. That's what this place is. And where we're standing right now is presumed to be, at this point, the original Bethsaida. Bethsaida where at least five of the disciples came from. You've got Peter and Andrew, James and John, the son of Zebedee, and you also have the apostle Philip. Five guys that were chosen by Jesus over on the other side of the Jordan River, were on the east, on the west side is Capernaum. And Capernaum is where Jesus ends up calling these guys away from their fishing boats, come and follow me, and they dropped their nets and they went and followed him. But it appears that this may be the original place where they came from. Now there's a second Bethsaida, so there's controversy about this, and that's okay. Somebody will figure it out someday. But on the side of the hill over there, there's another Bethsaida. It's been largely excavated, though not rebuilt, and it's a big place. And it dates back a long, long way before the time of Jesus. Archaeologists think it may now be the place of ancient Jeshur. Jeshur, you probably never heard of, but one of David's wives was from Jeshur, and her son was Absalom. And when Absalom had killed his half-brother, murdered his half-brother, uh, Amnon, that he fled home to, well, his mother's family in Jeshur, which was up here on the north edge of the Sea of Galilee, up on the side of the hill there. The kingdom of Jeshur, and it went up from there onto the Golan Heights. Down here at the time of Jesus, however, there was a village, and the village became something large because during the time of Jesus and a little bit before, the Romans moved in and put in, at the very least, a Roman bath, which meant they were here to stay, and it was becoming something very big and very Roman during that time, and the bath was excavated near this place. But here's the real interesting thing. This area right here, the archaeology that you can see behind me, is a very recent dig. In fact, it was underwater a couple of years ago when the lake level rose so high. This is a Byzantine church. Byzantine means late Roman. In other words, after Constantine came to power about 325 AD and beyond, the Byzantines, late Roman Christians, came in here and built this church. But they built it here for a reason. They believed at the time a tradition, which we don't know if it's true or not, but they certainly believed it was, that underneath this church is the house of Peter and Andrew, where they originally lived. And so they built a church over it as a pilgrimage site to commemorate where Peter and Andrew lived, presumably grew up, and then eventually moved. Now, why in the world did these five apostles and more perhaps move over to Capernaum? Well, that Roman bath may have something to do with it. You see, Galileans were two things, if nothing else. They were hotheads, and they hated the Romans. And when the Romans made their presence here in a big way, it's possible that economic reasons drove the disciples to Capernaum to move their fishing business where Jesus discovered them there. But it could also it have been political reasons, because they just hated Romans. We're not sure. But it appears now, historically, this is where they came from. This was their hometown. Which leads me to this. Just let me share one incident that occurred somewhere in this vicinity. Peter, James, John, all the disciples are with Jesus. Jesus has been ministering all day on the east side of the Jordan River, which is where we're standing now. And it's the end of the day. Everybody's tired. There is a huge mass of people, probably 20 to 25,000 people, and they're hungry. It's the end of the day. So Jesus turns to Philip and says, where should we find bread? Because Philip is from Bethsaida. Philip is incredulous. Are you kidding me? Where are we going to get bread this time of day? They bake bread in the morning. All the bread's gone. And besides, we need a year's wages to buy all the bread that these people could eat. And then Jesus tells them, you feed them. Long story short, a little child shows up with five little barley loaves and two fish. And Jesus multiplies the food, the fish and the bread. 
and feeds 5,000, the Bible says, men, plus their wives and their children. How many people is that? You do the math. We're guessing 20 to 25,000, could have even been more, but we'll stick with that more conservative figure. And when he was done feeding them, the disciples were given baskets, the 12, and they were told, go gather up all the scraps. This is called a clue because, first of all, all the people that were here, the 5,000 who were fed somewhere in this vast area behind these ruins up in here where you could fit that many people easily, that they had, in all four Gospels, eaten until they were full. When was the last time these people ever ate till they were full? Maybe even never. They were a very needy, poor, hungry people. And so they ate till they were full, and then the disciples gathered up 12 baskets of scrap. Leftover fish, leftover bread. But wait a minute. Hungry people who knew they were going to be hungry again tomorrow, and the next day and the next. If there's all this leftover food laying around, what are they going to do with it? Leave it and walk away? They're going to gather it up, put it in pouches, sacks, in the folds of their garments, wherever they can carry it, just with their hands, and take it home with them because they may never eat like this again. So when the disciples are given the baskets to go gather up all the leftovers and they come back with 12 baskets full, that's a story unto itself. It means that there was so much food that Jesus miraculously gave them that even the starving peasants that ate it couldn't carry it all away. They had to leave some. That's a lot of food. And that makes this miracle that we just sort of teach very quickly at Sunday school lessons, suddenly explode in size and in quality. An amazing thing. When Jesus was done feeding the people, he told the disciples, come down to the river, probably right here in this area. Get on the boat and meet me over at Gennesaret, which is, uh, again, a few miles from here along the shore. Jesus then went up into the hills behind to spend some time with his father. And if you read the rest of the story, a storm comes up at night. He ends up walking on the lake. If he started over here, he started on this part of the water and walked out during the storm to meet his disciples where he calmed the storm and they ended up at Gennesaret. And then the rest, well, that takes place in John chapter 6 where you can read it there. So there's the story. And this is Bethsaida, as far as we know, the real one, the right one. Here we are.